there's a lot of debate about the different drive sprockets and the benefits to having various teeth in the drive sprocket. And the main one is that at highway speeds, you have a lower RPM. So with this Honda CB500X, it's geared pretty short. That means that uh, first gear doesn't get you going very fast. Um, and even in sixth gear at 70 miles an hour, you know, the engine's revving up pretty high. So by changing the front sprocket from a 15 tooth, which is the factory setting, the factory front drive sprocket, to a 16 tooth, which is uh, what most people do, it essentially drops that RPM at high highway speeds down about five or 600 RPM. So that way your engine isn't working quite as hard on the high end. Now, I'm told that there's hardly any loss of torque on the low end, so there's almost no downside to changing to the 16 tooth front sprocket. So we're about to uh, go on that experiment and see what, see what that change makes. And before we do that, I wanted to take the bike out for one last spin on the 15 tooth sprocket and get a good idea of what the RPMs are at different speeds. There's a disabled vehicle ahead. Five o'clock probably wasn't the best time to be doing this, but oh well. Let's take it on up to 60 on the factory dial. I'm just under 5,000 RPMs. Yeah, it looks like about 48,000 or 4,800, 4,900, somewhere in there. So next, let's go to 70. Beautiful day out. So that's 70 miles an hour. I'm not quite 6,000 RPM. I'm probably about 58, yeah, 5,800 RPMs. So the engine's doing a little bit, a little bit more work. Let's uh, take it on up to 80 here. We've got a clear shot. Yeah, 6,500 RPM. Maybe 6,600 at 80. So as you can imagine, if you're cruising at 80 along some highway for a couple of hours at a stretch, yeah, 6,800 RPM might, might start to get a little taxing on this little machine that could. So hopefully that 16 tooth sprocket will allow it to cruise a little bit easier at higher speeds using a slightly lower RPM. Here we go again. Hey guys, this is Chris from Chris and Cami Photography and it's about 85 degrees in the shade today. Somehow, for some reason, I thought it was a good day to work on the bike. But what we are going to do today is replace the stock 15 tooth front sprocket with this 16 tooth front sprocket that my good friend Scott sent to me. What a great guy. He said it changes the entire uh, feeling of the bike, especially on the road, lowers the RPMs at high speeds on, uh, on the highway and uh, so we're going to give it a try. So let's get started. Today I'm going to have a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, 19 millimeter, 24 millimeter uh, torque wrench and a couple of uh, Allen wrenches. I think they're 8 and 5 if I remember correctly. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is remove this foot peg cover. Next, I'm going to remove this uh, shifter knob up here by removing this bolt and pulling that straight out. You'll want to make note that there is a mark. There's a little light mark you can see at the top and, the, and where the retaining part is. Uh, that way you can line it back up when you're done. Alright, when you have that out, you can just pull it down and set it to the side. Next, we're going to remove these two little uh, Allen bolts. All right, once you get those two bolts off, uh, you can kind of wiggle it out a little bit. And then back behind here is a little um, spring clip. 
You just have to remove that wire from that spring clip so that you can pull the cover the rest of the way off. To do that, all you do is uh, reach back behind and squeeze on both sides and it'll pop right out. Loosen the sprocket bolt, we'll need a 14 millimeter. But before we do that, we need to uh, prevent this from rotating. As you can see, that's going to rotate. So I'm going to take my uh, 24 millimeter, kind of pad it a little bit and stick it through here to keep the wheel from turning. This bolt is on here with 40 foot-pounds of torque, so it may take a good solid uh, effort with the wrench to get it started. And when you put it back on, make sure that you're using a torque wrench set to 40 foot-pounds. We're going to loosen the axle, and once we have that loose, we're going to back these guys out all the way, and that way we can push the wheel in as far as possible and give us a lot of slack on the chain. Alright, next I'm going to reach in here and pull this little guard out. From there it's pretty easy to pull the old dry sprocket out. There's the old one, stock, and there's the new 16 toother. Beauty! So now all I have to do is uh, reverse everything I just did, tighten up the chain guide and everything, and we'll be back on the road. Whoa! Okay, so I just changed out that 15 tooth front drive sprocket for the 16 tooth and immediately I can tell a difference in first gear. <laughs> wow, I actually have a usable first gear now. That's amazing. You know, it's kind of funny, uh, first gear on the stock sprocket is so short, a lot of times from a stop sign I'll just start in second gear and just skip first gear altogether. But now I actually feel like I have a first gear I can use. <laughs> this is great. I haven't even gotten up to the high speeds where the 16 tooth sprocket is supposed to really help. And I can already tell the difference. Now that's something you don't see very often. So one thing I'll mention uh, since I didn't show the reassembly process is that when I went to put that chain guard back on, that metal chain guard that I removed, it wouldn't fit with the larger sprocket. So I did a little bit of research and I know a lot of guys leave it off completely, but it is a safety feature. So I'm actually gonna use my inaugural ride on the 16 tooth sprocket to go to my friend Mike's house. He has a metal grinder and um, so we'll get that ground down just a little bit, maybe shave about I don't know, just a couple millimeters off of it to allow room for the larger drive sprocket and then uh, it should fit no problem. But on my way over there, let's uh, do a little uh, evaluation of the RPM changes. People, this is a merge lane. You do not stop. You keep going until you can merge in with the flow of traffic. Anyway, all right, so here we go. Let's take a look here. Let's see if we can squeeze up to 60 on this little stretch here. Forgive me, sir. Coming into your lane. All right, 
So there's a big difference in the speedometer, I can tell already. So at uh, 60 miles an hour on the speedometer, I'm under 5,000 RPM. It's like maybe 4,900 or 4,800. But I'm actually at 65 miles an hour. So be aware of that if you do put the uh, larger sprocket. It is going to throw off the, the uh, calibration of your speedometer on the motorcycle. Come right on over, sir. No need for a blinker at all. It's okay. Acceleration is smooth. Gears are a little more uh, nicely spaced out, not quite so tight and close together. Get to stretch my legs a little bit in between each shift, which is nice. All right, so we uh, did 60 a minute ago. So actually, if I'm at 60 miles an hour on the GPS, Oh my gosh, 60 miles an hour on the GPS is actually like 4,500 RPMs now. Wow, 4,600, 4,500, 4,600. That's pretty impressive. All right, 70 on the GPS. I'm, I'm at 5,000 RPM still. Maybe even 49. No, I think it's about five. 5,000 RPM at the 70 mile an hour mark. Let's see, I've got a boatload of pine straw, I'm a construction trailer, and I'm doing 56 miles an hour in the fast lane. Thank you very much. All right, so here we go. 77, 78, 79, and 80. Less than 6,000 RPM at 80. It's like 5,800, 5,800 RPM at 80. I will take it. Not nearly as much buzz in the handlebars. The bike seems to be operating super smooth. I'm telling you, this little 16 tooth upgrade, I have no idea why I waited so long. All right, so while I have a second and while I'm thinking about it, I just wanted to remind you to please uh, give me a thumbs up, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us so we can keep putting out more content. I appreciate you guys following along. I hope it helps. I'll leave a link in the uh, notes below so you know where to get one of these 16 tooth drive sprockets. If I hadn't been recording it, it could have easily been a, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minute job and uh, I'm not a big mechanic, so uh, I usually take a little longer than most guys who know their way around a bike a lot better than I do. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anyway, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Want to get something to eat now? Sure. Okay, we'll follow you to someplace in West Ashley. That's close to your house. Okay. Just try to keep up, okay? <laughs>